The ocean is a fascinating world, full of many mysteries. In this video, I invite you to discover some of the most amazing and unpredictable finds that have been hidden deep underwater. Enjoy watching! Nubian pharaohs belong to the 25th dynasty and are considered some of the most mysterious rulers. Their existence is something that Egyptians try to deny, mainly because they were dark-skinned. Nevertheless, archaeologists continue to find evidence of their existence. In Sudan, in rural areas around Nuri, a group of researchers found a staircase that presumably leads to the tomb of the first Nubian ruler. Nastasin. At the end of the descent, the archaeologists had an unpleasant surprise. The tomb was completely submerged in water. Then, underwater archaeologists, led by Pierce Paul Kreitzman, came to help. The experts managed to swim through the underwater corridor, after which they saw the tomb. Kreitzman said the burial chamber consisted of three rooms, decorated with vaulted ceilings. Inside the tomb, the researchers found only golden statues. However, this is probably not the only discovery in the future. The study of the tomb is quite complex due to the high water level, but its discovery has become irrefutable evidence of the existence of Nubian pharaohs. In 2019, Swedish underwater archaeologists were pleasantly surprised when they discovered a sunken 17th century warship in the Baltic Sea near the town of Vaxholm. The project leader, Jim Hansen, said that the discovered vessel is likely one of the warships built by order of Swedish King Gustavus Adolphus in the early 17th century. This is indicated by its striking resemblance to the well-known warship of the same era, Vasa. Vasa, named after one of the kings, was supposed to be the pride of the Swedish navy. The 70-meter-long vessel, equipped with 64 cannons, was indeed meant to instill fear in the enemy. However, due to construction errors, Vasa sank during its maiden voyage in August of 1628, having traveled no more than one kilometer. The restored ship is now housed in a museum in Stockholm. Apart from Vasa, three other ships were also built during this time, Apple, Cronin, and Scepter. It is believed that all of them were deliberately sunk after being decommissioned. Through the analysis of wood samples and technical features, experts concluded that the research team discovered the ship, Apple. The museum director in Stockholm stated that this ship will remain in the sea, as it is the twin brother of Vasa. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos had long been working on a project to locate the F-1 engines of the Saturn V rocket that carried the Apollo 11 spacecraft to the moon. The search took place in the Atlantic Ocean using modern sonar. In March of 2012, his team finally discovered the engines at a depth of 4,267 meters. Five F-1 engines were installed on the first stage of the Saturn V rocket. This rocket is still considered one of the most powerful in the world. Its engines consumed 1.7 tons of liquid oxygen and 800 kilograms of kerosene per second and had a power output of 32 million horsepower. Two and a half minutes after the launch of the manned spacecraft Apollo 11, the first stage was jettisoned into the Atlantic Ocean. It lay in the ocean waters for over 40 years until it was discovered by Bezos' team. The retrieval took over three weeks and served as a unique gift for the 44th anniversary of the first moon landing on July 16, 1969. Jason Voorhees is a character from the cult horror film Friday the 13th. He's a ruthless, cruel maniac wearing a mask and wielding a machete. In the sixth installment of the horror series, Tommy Jarvis chained the villain and sent him to the bottom of Crystal Lake. This particular episode inspired diver Curtis Lahr to create a unique and very frightening sculpture. In 2013, Lahr created an exact replica of Jason Voorhees in a hockey mask and with a machete in his hands. He then submerged it to a depth of about 35 meters at the bottom of Crystal Lake in the state of Minnesota. Since then, Jason seems to be waiting for his next victim underwater. The creator of the creepy sculpture published a video featuring his creation right after installing it at the bottom of the lake. Users appreciated his creativity and admitted that it indeed 
looks terrifying. Since Crystal Lake is a popular diving spot in Minnesota, Curtis Lahr also disclosed the exact location of the sculpture. The coordinates will help those who want to feel like a horror movie hero and prevent those who suddenly find themselves next to Voorhees from getting scared. Cuvier's beaked whales are marine mammals capable of diving to incredible depths. They were named in honor of the French naturalist Georges Cuvier. In 1804, he found a part of the beaked whale's carcass washed ashore after a storm. He became the first person to describe this species in 1923. It is very difficult for humans to encounter a beaked whale because they rarely come to the surface and prefer very deep waters. They are, in fact, record holders in their diving capabilities. For example, a sperm whale can dive to a depth of 2,250 meters, while a beaked whale is comfortable at nearly 3,000 meters. These animals are the deepest diving mammals in the world. Their unexplored nature and the incredible ability to dive so deep have, of course, attracted scientists. During observations, Zoologists managed to record the longest dive for one individual, which stayed underwater for 3 hours and 42 minutes before coming up for air. Sperm whales, in contrast, remain underwater for no more than one and a half hours. Like other marine mammals, beaked whales have a special chest structure. They can also slow down their heart rate and store oxygen in their muscles. However, it remains unclear to scientists what unique feature allows them to withstand such a significant underwater burden for an extended period. The world's oceans are diverse in their inhabitants. Some of these creatures resemble real-life monsters, either because of their grotesque appearance or their enormous sizes. One such terrifying creature is the colossal squid. This species of cephalopod mollusk is known for its imposing size. Their overall length can reach 13 to 14 meters, and their weight can exceed 500 kilograms. These giants inhabit Arctic waters. The colossal squid was first described in 1925 by British zoologist Guy Coburn Robson. Interestingly, the scientist never actually saw this species, but found two of its tentacles in a sperm whale's stomach. For the next 40 years, nothing more was heard about these Arctic squids. In 1970, four larvae of these mollusks were discovered in the Atlantic sector of Antarctica. The first encounter with an adult specimen occurred only in 1979, when a female squid accidentally ended up in a trawl net. To this day, colossal squids remain poorly understood. Scientists only know that they live in cold waters at depths ranging from 200 to 2,000 meters and are passive predators. The Blythe Star disappeared on October 13, 1973. That day, its crew was making a routine voyage between the city of Hobart in Tasmania and King Island. Suddenly, the ship tilted and capsized. Ten people on board managed to get into a lifeboat. For nine days, they tried to reach the shores of Tasmania. They succeeded, but due to dehydration and cold, three of them perished. The Blythe Star was searched for a long time without success. Finally, in April 2023, during the study of underwater landslides, a group of Australian researchers found the ship's wreckage. Cartographic imaging allowed for the identification of the sunken ship, which turned out to be the long-missing Blythe Star. The ship was entirely covered in algae and mud, its stern was damaged, and the steering cabin was missing. Interestingly, this shipwreck led to new laws being enacted in Australia aimed at improving maritime safety, including the implementation of a marine transport location signaling system. At the end of 2022, Norwegian researchers were mapping the bottom of Lake Mjosa, the largest lake in Norway, using high-resolution sonar technology. In one of the images, they noticed that at a depth of approximately 411 meters lay a sunken 10-meter-long vessel. 
Based on the image, scientists hypothesized that the ship was constructed using Scandinavian technology, where the planks of the hull are overlaid on each other. This shipbuilding method was popular during the Viking era and made the ship both light and sturdy. Additionally, the presence of a central rudder indicated that the ship could not have been built before the 13th century. These features led to the assumption that the ship sank during a storm between the 13th and 19th centuries. The fresh water and the ship's deep location have preserved it exceptionally well. In the waters of the Italian Riviera, at a depth of 17 meters, lies a bronze statue of Jesus Christ, known as Christ of the Abyss. The statue, standing two and a half meters tall, was installed back in 1954. Its creator, Italian diver Duilio Marcante, had long mourned his friend Dario Gonzati, who perished underwater. He decided to honor his memory by installing this monument at the site of his friend's demise. Interestingly, the statue has been replicated. There are now two identical monuments to the Son of God. One is located on the coast of St. George in the Southeast Caribbean Sea. Initially, the statue was placed underwater, but was later installed on the city's waterfront. The second sculpture was gifted to the American Underwater Society and sits at a depth of 8 meters off the coast of Florida near the Dry Rocks Coral Reef. The original statue from which the initial sculpture was cast is located in Italy's National Diving Museum. In 2017, during an underwater expedition in an unexplored area of North America's Lake Huron, a long-lost vessel named Ohio was discovered. Back in 1894, north of Presque Isle Lighthouse, it had collided with another sailing ship named Ayrton, which had also been missing for a long time. After discovering one of the ships, researchers teamed up to search for the Ayrton. Finally, in 2019, using the remote hydrolocation device Storm, they managed to find the schooner resting at a depth of 295 feet. The cargo ship, just over 190 feet long, seemed frozen in time. It lay on the bottom in a perfectly even position with all three masts raised. It looked as if the ship continued to sail through the waves. In the late 19th century, Ayrton was one of the many towed schooner barges that transported goods across the Great Lakes. On that fateful day of the disaster, September 26th, 1894, things had not been going well for the crew of the Ayrton since the morning. After the towing steamship's engine failed, Ayrton found itself drifting alone under the power of strong winds. Attempts to raise the sails led the ship off course, ultimately causing it to collide with the cargo ship Ohio, which was loaded with 1,000 tons of grain. As a result of the collision, only two out of the seven crew members of Ayrton survived. If you think that fish are devoid of feelings and cannot form attachments to humans, this story of friendship will change your perception of sea creatures. Once, Japanese diver Hiroyuki Arakawa was making his routine dive in Tateyama Bay when he noticed an injured fish from the sheephead rasa species. The fish acted quite aggressively at the sight of a human, but Hiroyuki was persistent in his attempt to save its life. For several weeks, he made unplanned dives just to bring mollusks and crabs for the fish. At first, he would leave them in plain sight and swim away, but soon the fish sensed the kindness of the man and began to trust him. Since then, 25 years have passed. Hiroyuki celebrated his 79th birthday, but still continues to dive regularly to meet his fish friend, whom he named Yoriko. To announce his presence, the elderly man hits an underwater gong, and Yoriko immediately swims to him. They then exchange friendly hugs and kisses. It must be said that sheephead wrasses look quite unusual and rather repulsive. Their head resembles a sheep snout as if someone has punched it, and crooked teeth can be seen from their slightly open mouth. But as they say, looks aren't everything. Yoriko has proven to everyone that fish can love humans and look forward to meetings with them as much as cats and dogs do. In 2004, during an expedition in the Central American state of Belize, scientists from Louisiana State University discovered a Mayan salt workshop. 
This valuable find was preserved because it was hidden in the waters of a lagoon in a mangrove forest. In this location, straw dwellings and ancient pottery were found. Interestingly, these vessels seemed to be standardized, as all of them had the same volume. According to the scientists' assumptions, representatives of this ancient civilization were boiling salty water to extract salt. Salt is an essential mineral. In the first millennium AD, it was not just a primary raw material, but also a kind of currency for transactions. Therefore, it's likely that the Mayans, having developed the technology for its extraction, were trying to improve their economic standing among other civilizations. The lion's mane jellyfish is a type of jellyfish often called the lion's mane due to its unique appearance. The top of the jellyfish is colored yellow with red edges. Its bell is adorned with numerous tentacles that resemble a lion's lush mane. The lion's mane jellyfish can be considered the king of the underwater world. They are the largest jellyfish in the world's oceans. Typically, their size does not exceed 20 to 24 inches, but there are true giants among them. The diameter of the bell of such specimens can reach six and a half feet, and their overall length, including the tentacles, can be up to 120 feet. For comparison, the body length of a blue whale is 108 feet. Now, do you understand the scale of this creature? Lion's mane jellyfish are predators. They have stinging cells on their tentacles, which they use to sting and capture their prey. Usually, their prey consists of planktonic organisms and other jellyfish. Despite their monstrous size, these jellyfish do not pose a deadly threat to humans. However, their sting can cause painful sensations and allergies. On January 28, 1986, a tragedy involving the space shuttle Challenger occurred. 73 seconds after liftoff, the fuel tank exploded, leading to the death of all seven crew members. After the disaster, a search and rescue operation was initiated, during which many fragments of the spacecraft were discovered at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. However, one piece remained missing. 36 years after the tragedy, a camera crew from the History Channel accidentally found the missing fragment of the Challenger. In November of 2022, scientists were supposed to be filming a documentary about the search for a World War II plane, but instead, near the coast of Florida, they stumbled upon a piece of the thermal shield from the Challenger's nose cone. NASA's manager, Michael Cianilli, confirmed the authenticity of the debris and admitted that upon seeing the footage of the discovery, he felt the same bitterness and pain as he had during the original catastrophe. Megalodon is a species of extinct sharks that are considered the largest fish to have ever existed. By some estimates, Megalodons reached up to 49 feet in length, three times larger than the great white shark. The name Megalodon is derived from the Greek language translating to big tooth. This name is quite fitting, as its teeth could grow up to seven inches in length. Megalodon teeth are commonly discovered in archaeology, primarily because the giant predator would continually shed them throughout its life. However, owning such a fossil is quite rare. In May of 2023, it was revealed that an unknown passenger of the Titanic had owned such a prehistoric treasure. As part of the scientific project Magellan, researchers took more than half a million photos of the sunken ship lying at extreme depths. During the detailed examination, researchers noticed a unique piece of jewelry, a gold necklace with a pendant made from a megalodon tooth. The scientists explained that although they can't say for sure that this is a tooth from the prehistoric shark, many nuances suggest that it is. For example, the size of the tooth is significantly large, and it has a dark collar between the crown and root a characteristic feature of megalodon teeth. This discovery is very recent and requires further study. The owner of the necklace remains unknown, but most likely they were a first-class passenger, as only a wealthy person could afford such an artifact.
During diving excursions, some divers stumble upon interesting and even valuable objects. One such lucky person was Gideon Harris. Completely by chance, off the northwest coast of Israel, he discovered a sunken ship. It turned out that archaeologists had known that a shipwreck involving a trading vessel had occurred in this location in the 3rd century CE. However, they couldn't locate its exact position, and the diver helped them finally do so. Examination of the sunken ship revealed that it was carrying several dozen tons of marble and Corinthian columns. This shipwreck is considered the oldest known in the Mediterranean Sea. The ship likely carried cargo from Greece to Alexandria and ran aground in a storm in the shallows. Historians had long debated how architectural elements were delivered to ancient Rome, whether in one piece or in parts. The diver's accidental discovery finally provided them with an answer to this question. There are many gaps in human history, which is why every discovery of primitive human remains is immensely valuable to scientists. In 2007, human remains were discovered in the Ojo Negro Cave on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The cave is very deep and always filled with water, making it challenging to examine the skeleton. Underwater archaeologists had to scan it underwater, but the results were worth it. Scientists discovered that the remains belonged to a girl who was around 15 to 17 years old at the time of her death. Despite her young age, she had children. Her death occurred after she fell into a deep pit that was later filled with water. Many animals also fell into this pit, as indicated by the presence of numerous remains of saber-toothed tigers, giant sloths, tapirs, and other beasts. Scientists named the girl Naya after the Naiads, the water nymphs in ancient Greek mythology. Naya lived in this region around 12,000 years ago. Her life was not easy. Analysis of her teeth showed that she suffered from malnutrition. The structure of the bones in her hands indicated that she engaged in heavy physical labor for an extended period. The study also revealed that Naya's ancestors came to South America via the Bering Strait. In total, archaeologists discovered 98 fragments of her skeleton, including a well-preserved skull, scapulae, leg and arm bones, some vertebrae, and almost all ribs. Naya's remains are considered the most complete ancient skeleton ever found in America. In 2021, a wooden canoe was found on the Yucatan Peninsula near the ancient Mayan city of Chichen Itza. It was in an underwater cave at a depth of more than four and a half meters. Many human and animal remains were found around the canoe, allowing scientists to assume that rituals were performed in the cave. In total, 38 human remains were discovered. Among the animals that perished there were dogs, turkeys, an eagle, and an armadillo. One of the gods of the Mayan underworld was represented as an armadillo, so the presence of these bones suggested that rituals took place in the cave. The canoe was too heavy at both ends to be seaworthy, so it likely served as a ceremonial object. Exactly which ritual was performed is unknown. It may have been a sacrifice to the gods of the underworld, as the Mayans practiced this to protect themselves from evil deities. Initially, it was believed that the canoe dated back to the end of the first millennium CE. However, further analysis showed that it is about 500 years old. This find has helped researchers understand that the Mayans continued performing rituals until the end of their civilization. In 2004, the oldest known medicine kit was found off the coast of Tuscany. It was on an ancient Roman trade ship, which was presumably traveling from the eastern Mediterranean and sank near Italy in 130 BCE. The shipwreck was initially discovered in 1974 and was investigated in 1989 and 1990. Large amounts of glass, lamps, and dishes were raised from the ship during these expeditions. 14 years later, the investigation of the ship resumed and a wooden box containing various medical tools and well-sealed cylinders with two types of ancient pills was discovered. The found pills were sent to the lab for analysis. It turns out that the first pills were made from various natural plant ingredients and the second set contained a large amount of zinc. Scientists speculate 
that the first set of pills was used by sailors as a vitamin supplement, while the second set was likely used for treating vision problems. The discovery of this ancient medicine kit provided invaluable information on the types of medicines used by people over 2,100 years ago. American diver Steve Brand shared a very strange story with his followers, one that's quite difficult to believe. According to him, in July of 2022, he was doing a practice dive near the shore of one of California's deepest lakes, Tahoe. Reaching a depth of about 10 meters, he noticed an unidentifiable object partially covered in sand. Swimming closer, he realized it was a camera. Steve decided to take it with him. Back home, he thought it would be interesting to look at the photos taken by the camera's owner. Looking at the developed photographs, he was shocked. Staring right back at him from the pictures was his wife as a child. Similar pictures exist in their family album, the same dress and the same shoes. Upon seeing this, he couldn't hold back his tears because his wife had tragically died during one of her dives. Steve still believes that his find was not just a coincidence, and perhaps if he had found the lost camera earlier, he could have warned his wife about the dangers and deterred her from diving. Canadian diver Clayton Helkenberg has an unusual hobby. He loves diving near the coast to find lost items and, if possible, return them to their owners. In March of 2021, at the bottom of a lake in Harrison Hot Springs, a few pairs of sunglasses, a flip phone, and an iPhone 11. After retrieving the items from the water, he hurried home to dry the phones. Imagine his surprise when he managed to turn on the iPhone. The diver took out the SIM card from the phone and called its owner. She turned out to be a Vancouver resident named Fatima Godzi. During a boat trip, she accidentally dropped her iPhone, and it fell straight into the lake. Six months had passed since then, and it's absolutely unclear how the phone managed to turn on after such a prolonged exposure to water. The woman had no hope of ever finding it, and also admitted that she considered Clayton's call a joke. Undoubtedly, Fatima was incredibly happy to get her phone back as she stored important personal photos on it. That's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.